some of the mistakes that a seasoned quarterback like Chris Chandler is not making. Has not made thus far, exactly. And I think it's it's something that Brunel will grow with. You can't, it takes experience in the NFL, and the only way of doing it is get out, getting out and playing. Al Del Greco begins the second half. Willie Jackson from the five yard line for Jacksonville, cutting across to the near side of the field and dragged out of bounds by number 22, Tamor Barnes. So a pretty good return by Willie Jackson. And that sets up the Jaguars at the 32-yard line. Gives them pretty good field position. It's important for them to continue to maintain pace with the Oilers. Their offense did that in the first half except for that last score. They have to come in here now and do something in order to maintain that pace that they had been doing. Houston shows that uh, five linebackers set early on first and ten. James Stewart in the backfield as Brunel passes on first down, and that's complete to 85. What Brunel throws to number 85. Jaguar Rich Griffith. Griffith. Joe Bowden on uh, the stop for Houston. The Oilers Griffith, uh, excuse me, Bart, uh, separated a shoulder in the preseason. The Oilers want to keep that speed in there with their linebackers. They're able to keep the receivers tight ends particularly in front of them instead of getting behind them for those 10 to 20 yard gains. First catch of the season for Griffith. Second down and seven. Brunel looks right, goes left. James Stewart out of the backfield. Nice job of breaking a tackle at the 35. Gets up to just across the 40-yard line, short of the first down, brought down by Barrow. Well, we talked about earlier about James being able to make people miss, and we also talked about Baron Worthen, the middle linebacker who's taken the place of Al Smith, of missing a few tackles, and here it happens again. He missed the tackle on James Smith or Stewart, and Stewart was able to uh, pick up five or six more yards. Stewart over 50 yards rushing now in the ball game. Third down, Brunel has the first down. That's a nice catch made by Derek Brown, his second of the game. Blaine Bishop on the stop. But Derek Brown was a number one draft choice, uh, Bart, for the New York Giants. And now in his uh, fifth year, had only 11 career receptions coming into this season, but makes a couple of grabs. Michael early. Barrow's right there. Derek catches it with his hands. One of the uh, things wrapped against him is he had a tendency of letting things come to his body. He didn't ca wouldn't catch with his hand. There was a nice example of him catching with his hand. Ball just across midfield. And Brunel swings it out to Lachey Maston. He's got another first down. And another good game for Jacksonville. Marcus Robertson along with Bowden on the stop. Excellent play action fake here. They lost track of Matson. <laughs> follow him. They went, they went after, after the running back. They let the fullback through. Nobody, nobody watched him. Nice game. And Brunel doing a good job of mixing it up. Good play calling by the coaching staff right now. When you're successful running the ball, you can do that. Your play action passes work, and it opens up to down the field passes as well. And Brunel to the air again, and this is caught. Keenan McCardo flies come in on the far side. Darrell Lewis was on the coverage. They are, they are very high on Keenan McCardle. Terrific job here of coming back to the ball, not letting the receiver dictate. Brunel throws it, good timing. Talked about the timing earlier, he comes back. Darrell Lewis, an all pro. Defense, number 29, penalty is declined. First down. So they'll take the big yardage gained by McCardle on the pass reception down to the 17-yard line, first and 10 for Jacksonville. The wide receivers have been complaining about not getting the rock enough. And there is Kevin Gilbride, the former offensive coordinator for the Houston Oilers from 1990 to 93, now in his second year for Jacksonville. Jeeves Stewart slips and falls at the line of scrimmage, but Baron Wortham came in there penetrating for Houston very quickly. Makes the shoelace, shoelace tackle. The wide receivers for the Jaguars have been complaining about not getting enough balls. So uh, they're saying, we wanted the rock. We want that rock more. 
So Pete Carmichael yesterday, as, as we're, we're meeting, we come into the meeting room with he's the, the wide receivers. He's the wide receivers coach. The wide receivers coach. We go in there, and there's rocks all on their tables. As, as we asked about it, they said, well, they said they wanted the rocks, so I brought them some rocks. Here they are, literally. They're doing a good job today with Rising and the Cardinal. Well, they lost about a yard on that play. Second and 11. Brunel from the shotgun. Andre Rising's got another first down. is doing a good job of giving Brunel time to throw. Here they bring one blitzer. They pick him up. No penetration. One-on-one -on -one pass blocking there, and they don't lay a hand on him. Somebody from the front of the Oilers has got to get through. They've got to put pressure. The wide receivers for the Jaguars are too good to cover for a long period of time, in, in spite of the all-pro nature or status of that Houston Oilers defense. First practice. and goal from the six. James Stewart stopped very quickly. Michael Barrow in there. Andre Risen already has four catches for 67 yards. He's matched his number of receptions last week. We mentioned uh, how his numbers really dropped off in his final year uh, with Cleveland last year. But uh, as you mentioned earlier, Bart, here's a guy that can uh, light it up in a hurry. Even though he hasn't been to the Pro Bowl since uh, 94, you know that uh, the defensive secondary of Houston respects him. They respect him, and, and to some degree, I think they fear him. They know that he can go all the way at any time. Ryzen is on the far side left, picked up by the corner, Daryl Lewis. Oilers look like they came up with a little defensive wrinkle to confuse the Jaguars a bit. And the delay of game, that moves Jacksonville five yards even further back. So now they're back at the 13-yard line. You hate to see those mistakes when you're down there and scoring opportunity to push you further back. It's hard enough to get down there, but then to make the mistakes, the delay of games or an offside and put you back makes it that much more difficult. Look at Brunel on this current drive. Seven of seven. To the end zone, incomplete. McCardle was back there. Risen was back there. Defensive backs were back there. That little convention <laughs> back there. Yeah, there was plenty of activity in the corner of the end zone. We mentioned Kevin Gilbride as the offensive coordinator in his second year. This is the very first time in franchise history that the same starting offense started two straight games for Jacksonville. 16 different offensive starting lineups last year. It's a reason that they have been more successful today. You need that continuity in order to get the timing down between the receivers and the quarterbacks, between the running back and the offensive line, between the offensive line and themselves, and they're able to do that. You see a much better execution this week than they even had last week. Third down and third. Third down and goal, and this one will bring up fourth down, and we'll see another field goal attempt by Hollis. Chris Dishman comes in from the corner here, puts some pressure on Brunel. Before he wants to throw it, he has to get rid of it. So he does the smart thing and throws it out of the end zone. Mike Hollis, two for two in the first half, hitting from 38 and 37. This will be a 31-yard attempt. Ryan Barker, the punter, is the holder. Rich Griffith is the snapper. And Hollis misses this 31-yarder. That is the very first field goal he has missed this year. So it remains 24-13. Bart, I believe the temperature has cooled off a little bit here, uh, but Tom Coughlin uh, hot on the sidelines after Hollis missed that 31-yard field goal, and now the Oilers take over from the spot of the miss at the 21. Eddie George in the backfield for the Oilers. They lead it 24-13. to Chandler going right to work. Wycheck again. Flag comes in as Wycheck has struggled down at the... Uh, 27-yard line, Vinnie Clark on the stop. It's, it's difficult as your offense moves the ball down and gets in scoring position, in position to score some points, and then the kicker 
misses the field goal. It's uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, you know you always, as, as a player, you want that kicker to make. Holding them. offense number 77, 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Well, speaking of uh, bad moves in the wrong, it was Kevin Donnelly who was just called for that penalty. He was the uh, right guard for Houston that made the critical illegal procedure on Al Del Greco's field goal attempt last week that backed him up to uh, to a point where he had to try and make a 55-yarder. So Donnelly flagged again there, and Houston moved back to just across the 10-yard line. Eddie George caught in the backfield, spins his way out of it. Cut back up the field across the 20, 30. And that is Benny Clark trying to chase him down. Will 27 catch 27? Just barely at the 13-yard line. Oh, my. Very, very nice run by Eddie George. Should have been tackled for a loss. Irv Eatman gets pushed in the backfield. The George spins around. Great job of avoiding tra Travis Davis. And, and it's and a foot race. Vinnie Clark. And, you know, if there's any rap on George, doesn't have blinding breakaway speed, but uh, you can do with that big game. That certainly helps out the average. Puts him in great position. Rodney Thomas in for Eddie George, who, of course, needs a breather. That puts Eddie George over the 100-yard mark. He has 11 carries for 118 yards off of that 76-yard run. Well, the former Heisman Trophy winner showing that he is a quality running back and that he belongs here in the NFL. And George quickly back in. Second down and eight, ball at the 11-yard line. Houston already with a 24 to 13 lead. There are the numbers for Eddie George. Averaging over 10 yards a carry, that long run. Chandler, touchdown, Willie Davis. Davis's second touchdown reception of the season. I really like the way Chris Chandler is standing back in the pocket. Very comfortable, very relaxed, getting plenty of time from his offense and just throwing the ball where he wants to throw it. He likes it. He's feeling good about himself right now. Two touchdown passes. From the arm of Chandler, that one good to Willie Davis. And all of a sudden, Houston uh, is pulled ahead by 17. This extra point will give them an 18-point lead if Del Greco can push it through, as he always does. And with 7.08 left in the third quarter, Houston's lead is now 31 to 13. Pretty good touchdown run by George Bart. He's uh, actually not the touchdown run, but the 76-yard run to set up the uh, touchdown reception by uh, Willie Davis. And now Del Greco puts this one in the end zone, and Willie Jackson downs it in the end zone. And let's uh, take another look at that uh, nifty run by George. You always like it when you've got a running back that can take a situation that should be a loss. The tackle here, little draw play gets driven into the backfield. He spins out of it, makes two guys miss him there, makes Travis Davis miss him again, makes an instinctive cut back up against the grain, and it's a foot race from there. And as you mentioned, he, he's not known for having that blazing speed, but that'll do. When you can make runs that length, when you're averaging 10 yards a carry, Well, an injured player on the field will take a break. Seven minutes left in the third. Houston in command by 18. You're watching the NFL on NBC. 16 unanswered points on Tom Coughlin's team. Hard to believe, Bart, just a week ago, they beat uh, Pittsburgh pretty handily, 24 to nine, and now trailing here with seven minutes left in the third quarter. James Stewart working his way around the right side for not much of the game. Uh, Pittsburgh certainly has bounced back from their loss here to Jacksonville. They're up 31-17 over uh, the Baltimore Ravens. The, the uh, Jaguars played a very sound game against them last week, preventing them from doing...
doing the things they want to do. They didn't make the big mistakes that allowed the easy points for Pittsburgh. But today you see a different story. You see they're not able to capitalize when they're moving the ball and uh, they have not been able to stop the Oilers thus far. Fake is through it this time and downfield uh, just out the uh, outreached arms of Keenan McCardle. And Darrell Lewis was on the coverage and another flag is down. Remember, he was called earlier. It looks like somebody grabbed somebody. It's going to be on Lewis again. Uh, Interference. Defense. Number 29. First down. Last week, he got burned right before halftime. He got beat for a touchdown that uh, allowed the Oilers to go ahead on a play where he jumped what he thought was going to be a slant. The guy went behind him. Uh, today, instead of letting the guy get behind him, he looks like he just reached out and grabbed him and tried to catch, prevent him from catching the long run. He's had good days against Jacksonville in the past. Three of his six interceptions last year against the Jaguars as Stewart heads to the left side. Joe Bowden made the stop, but uh, Daryl Lewis, part of a strong Houston defensive secondary part. Pro Bowler last year, Lewis was. Bishop was a Pro Bowler. Dishman made the Pro Bowl in 92. Many feel that uh, this is one of the better secondaries in the NFL. They're a very tight-knit group. In fact, uh, many of their wives gather uh, at home when the team is on the road and watch the game together. So they do a, a lot of things together. Very good group, good athletes. But Brunel is showing why he is the quarterback of the Jaguars. Doing an excellent job. Second and four, Gene Stewart was wide open. He'll have the first down close to the Houston 30 before Marcus Robertson finally dragged him down. So something for Jacksonville to shoot about here on this series. Mark Burnell is doing a heck of a job today. He's got a lot of confidence back there. He's setting his feet, not jumping around. Looks off the receiver and throws it to Stewart. Has a substantial gain. Jaguars, Jaguars offense, Dan, is, is doing a great job. They have to finish off the drives up. They need touchdowns and, and not field goal attempts. And they have been depending on Stewart for the bulk of the yards, either on the ground or through the air. Now this time to get some help complete at the 20-yard line is Keenan McCardle. And he's got another first down for Jacksonville. On the subject of Stewart, he's got 55 yards on the ground on 15 carries. He also has three catches for 37 yards. And there is James Stewart a little bit fatigued. It's hot down there. It would be very, very hot. I would have hated to have been a running back having to run the ball like that on a hot day. I was much more content as an offensive lineman. <laughs> much more sedentary life on the line there. Yeah, absolutely. If you got tired, you fell down. Burnell looks like he's audibleizing at the line of scrimmage here. Stands in the pocket, delivers to McCardle. First and goal for Jacksonville. Nice job by Brunel staying in the pocket. And Bart, he does have a tendency to run, but that was a nice job of hanging in there. He, last week, whenever he felt pressure, he took off. He had 10 runs. None of them were designed. Today, his first receiver's not open. He waits, he waits, makes a good throw to Keenan McCardle. Has plenty of time in there. He's got the space to jump up and down and, and celebrate after making a good throw. First and goal, ball on the two-yard line. And they give it to Stewart. Tripped up at the five-yard line. Nice play penetrating in by Mike Halifan, a free agent rookie out of Pittsburgh. They're playing a lot of, they're trying to rotate guys in that defensive front. The, the first guys that start the game are getting tired. Mike Halifan, it helps to get a guy that comes in and make a play like that from someone that you really don't expect to get a big play from. Jeff Fisher says one of his uh, big concerns coming in was uh, the defensive line up front, especially with the injury of Anthony Cook, the second round pick last year who's out with a knee injury. They're very thin up front, so it helps to have someone come in and, and uh, give them some quality minutes as well as a big play. Well, 301 left in the third quarter, Jacksonville threatening at the five yard line of Houston. 
must touchdown score for them. Second down and five. Second down and goal, and that is Jimmy Smith. Touchdown. They needed that. They had to score a touchdown there. Mark Brunell is very composed today. Lines up in a shotgun on the second down, a little unusual. I think it might have surprised the Oilers a little bit that they were in that shotgun formation there so close to the goal line when it was only second down. And it spread things out a little bit for him. And Mike Hollis with the extra point. Jacksonville needed the touchdown and got it. They've reduced the Oilers lead to 11 with 2.47 left in the third. Jacksonville off the seven-play, 80-yard scoring drive has pulled within 11. Mike Hollis to kick off. Harmon and Gray back deep, and once again, it'll be the specialist Gray, and he'll have to down this one in the end zone. And Houston will begin at the 20. Back to the touchdown, Bart. An unusual formation by the Jaguars on the five-yard line. They've got five wide receivers in the game trying to create a mismatch, trying to create some confusion among the Oilers. They cross them over. Grinnell does a good job of timing the pass and hitting Jimmy Smith for the touchdown. Jimmy Smith uh, tied for the Jaguars lead with five touchdowns last year. Hall's in his first one there, and uh, the injured player for Houston is Joe Bowden. And uh, that could be cramps related to the heat, but uh, Houston already uh, missing a couple of starters on defense. Al Smith, as we mentioned, out. The captain of this team, and Anthony Cook, also out. And we'll take this time to remind you that uh, Jeff Foxworthy is bringing his own brand of the must-see family comedy to NBC Monday. The Jeff Foxworthy Show is kicking off Monday nights at 8 o'clock, 7 central, in just a couple of weeks on NBC. Are you a Foxworthy fan, Bart? You were born in the South. Oh, yeah. Albany, Georgia. I know Rednecks. You can relate to this guy, can't you? You know Rednecks. You know a Redneck when? <laughs> when? <win. laughs> when I look in the mirror? Well, the fans have regained some enthusiasm here as Jacksonville has uh, scored and Bowden walks off the field. Bowden has come on for them. He's done a good job, a good job for them. They lost Eddie Robinson to the Jaguars, signed as an unrestricted free agent, and Bowden is the one that, uh, that got the starting nod when uh, Eddie Robinson left, and he's done a good job in producing in this attack-style defense that Fisher is, uh, has implemented. Jaguars need a defensive stop here, Bart, to uh, keep the momentum going as Houston begins at the 20. Chandler avoids the pressure and gets rid of it to Chris Sanders. First down for Houston. Billy Clark on the coverage. Dan, a large percentage of the time when you bring the seven-man, six-seven-man blitz and you don't get the pressure on the quarterback, it's going to result in a big play. The DB comes, Chris Hudson comes, he misses it there. Chandler does a, Chandler does a good job of stepping up. He's able to hit him for the 20-yard gain. Sanders just keeps reeling off the big gains. He led the uh, NFL with a 23.5 average last year. He's a big play receiver. That one good for 20. Houston at the 40-yard line. Average 28 last week. On just two catches, flag comes in. Complete far side Sanders again for another good game. But we'll have to see what the uh, flag reveals. It really is huge when you think about it that a receiver for the season. Full start prior to the snap. Number 77. Ouch. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Dolly again. But to ha as I let me finish my thought, for a receiver to average 23 yards a catch for the season, that's huge. 
Uh, I don't really see it there. They call 77. It looks like he goes on the on the uh, ball to snap the ball. Official saw something that we didn't see with the camera. So take away the reception for Sanders. Move back Houston to the 35. First and 15. And complete far side to Frank Wycheck, who's already got a touchdown reception under his belt. He's across the 45. Brought down by Eddie Robinson. The Jaguars are trying to blitz. They're trying to stunt their front guys. The offensive line for the Oilers are doing a very good job of picking that up. As we mentioned earlier, they were embarrassed after the, their performance last week against Kansas City, thinking that they didn't play nearly as well as they should have. You got two Pro Bowl performers up front, very experienced group. They're doing a good job on the Jaguars' front today. They didn't have much of a running game last week, Bart. The only game, 72 yards. As you look at Rodney Thomas corralled behind the line of scrimmage. That's what your blitz is sometimes designed to do. You may, Even if it's a run, you're designed to be there in the running lanes and prevent a running game from developing. They've got the safety up there, Chris Hudson in an eight-man front, and there's nobody to account for them. You've got eight men, eight men in the front there, nobody to block them. Quarterback should check out of that. Chris Chandler mentioned that when there were two, seven guys, eight guys in the front, they couldn't block them, but he usually wanted to check out of it. Third down and four. And they've got the first down. Willie Davis picks up the first down. So Houston keeps the drive alive. Chris Hudson made the stop, and that's the final play of the third quarter. Oilers 31. Jaguars 20. Back after these messages and a word from your local station. Bonus items and extra savings. So you can get all those projects done and still have time to enjoy the season. Pick up any four packages of Duracell batteries, just $219 or $259 each, and we'll kick in this full-size football free. True Value, official hardware store of the NFL and homes everywhere. I have now been off the Nicotrol patch for exactly one month. Using the Nicotrol patch, there was only the one dosage, and that made it very simple to use. You didn't have to worry about different phases and different steps that you had to go through. New Nicotrol, a whole new and simple way to help you quit. Only Nicotrol has a six-week program, not ten weeks like the other patch or twelve weeks like the gum. I didn't stop. I quit. And to stop is momentarily. To quit is for good, and that's what I've done. Six weeks, one step. Take control with Nicotrol. The NFL on NBC is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call now to enjoy a hot and delicious Domino's Pizza during the game. For hot and wow, call Domino's now. All right, the Ravens off the interception by Bashan Adams. Go to work at their 26-yard line. They're trailing the Steelers 31-17. And Leroy Horn breaking tackles that broke, brought down by Jerry Olsavsky. Here's the line of scrimmage on that last, whoops. Here's the line of scrimmage on that last play at the 29-yard line. The interception takes place legally in terms of the throw. He's not across right at the 30. He lets the ball go. What Mike Tomczak did wrong there, though, he throws back across his body into the inside. Don't throw back to the middle. You roll him to the right. Don't throw back hard to the left. Second down and four. The first down picked up by Horde. Again, it is Olszewski on the tackle. Bill Coward doesn't seem too bothered by the interception. You know, when a quarterback is playing well, he makes a mistake here and there. You don't want to jump his kick. Houston, second down and nine ball at the Jacksonville 45. And Eddie George gets the call again. Looks like he stopped again. Still on his feet. Turns the corner and picks up. Oh, close to the first down. Looked like he got it. What a run. And a good block on that far side to spring him even further by Derek Russell. When, when you think he's done, when you think he's going to get stopped for a loss, he springs it. This guy is not down until he's down. He got the first down. Penetration. Don Dave, he runs right into him. Looks like he tried to push him away. Got to wrap up on this guy. Got to wrap up. That looks like one of his runs at Ohio State. Did that so many times. Dances around the line of scrimmage, picks his hold, and has the quick burst of speed.
to turn the corner. Rodney Thomas has now given him a breather, and Thomas spins his way inside the 30-yard line, so Houston keeps the drive alive. Clock continues to roll, 13-20. That's got to be hard on a guy like Rodney Thomas, who was the man last year. He was the guy that went for almost 1,000 yards. He was the guy that, that carried the offensive load when it had to be carried, and now he's watching Eddie George do what he thinks he could do. It's got to be difficult for him, and uh, maybe it's going to motivate him, but when he is, does get the chance, he does it. Works a little bit harder. Good six-yard run by Thomas. Three, three. Chandler to Derek Russell. Incomplete. Vinny Clark was covering Derek. It's an in... Vinny breaks on the ball very nicely, makes that hit right at the reception that prevents Russell from holding on to the ball. It's an enviable position to be in for a coaching staff to have a guy who goes for 1,000 yards, and you can't even put him on the field because your rookie running back is doing too good of a job. Here's another one of those key third down conversion attempts. Houston already 4-6, 34. Comes the blitz. Well, they faked it. And Houston will pick up another first down. That's Ronnie Harmon. And that's what he does well. Comes in on third down and picks up the first down. So five of seven on third down conversions for the Oilers. Ronnie Harmon comes in as an unrestricted free agent, signs a nice contract. Could have gone to a number of places. I know that the uh, 49ers were very interested in his services. Would have fit in very nicely in that type of scheme where they throw a lot of balls to running backs. Well, there's the offensive coordinator, Jerry Rome. He says, we'll move Ronnie Harmon around a lot, just like uh, they did with Todd McNair last year or when he was with the Oilers. They're doing a better job today of mixing their running backs in and out of the uh, line of strength or in the, in the game. Rodney Thomas looking for a block from Bruce Matthews on the left side, picks up a couple. Jerry Rome has been... Uh, Maybe the difference uh, with the improved play of Chris Chandler as well. He was with him with the Cardinals, and uh, Chris Chandler said he really owes his turnaround in professional football and uh, the new confidence that he has to Jerry Rome. He says he's a new player because of him. As, uh, in our conversations with, with, with Jerry Rome yesterday, he's been around a lot of good quarterbacks. He's been a good mentor. But he said that uh, Chris Chandler had a real attitude problem, particularly in Arizona, you know, to the extent where... Jerry told him he didn't want him there. Said he was sour, uncoachable. As Rodney Thomas gets the call, close to another first down. And finally, uh, it was Chris Chandler who came back into Jerry Rome's office and said, you know, you're right. I did have a bad attitude. He'd been around the league, hadn't been in any good situations where he really felt he had a chance to uh, not only start but be productive. And uh, he said, coach me. You're right. I have been, uh, I have had a bad attitude. And uh, since then, Spent time with him in that 92 offseason, and he's been a different player since then. He's a very productive quarterback today. He'd have to be in the upper echelon of the NFL quarterbacks. His father-in-law is the ex-NFL great and now current professional golfer, John Brody. Third down and one. Another one of those third down conversions for the Oilers. They've been automatic so far, and spinning for another one is Eddie George. Six of eight. Jeff Fisher has to like that. Just pretty much a scrum type of play. Eddie George is able to pick wherever he wants to go. And all he needs is, is a yard to get the first down. And that's, all, and that's what he got. Eddie George already over 100 yards. Most of it coming on that 76-yard run in the third quarter, which led to a Houston score to make it 31-13. Jacksonville is out of the score to make it 31-20, but Houston on the march here again. Rodney Thomas this time spins down to about the seven-yard line. The numbers on uh, Eddie George Bart, 14 carries, 138 yards. Well, obviously his mother must be very proud of him. She says sending him to the military academy uh, in high school and having him stay away from the home while it was difficult is uh, certainly paying off dividends and has been paying off dividends. He's, 
He's noted as a uh, very solid citizen and a terrific guy. Second down now from the six. Oh, one-sided. And that is Kevin Hardy, who gets his second sack. He had a sack last week, and he's the number two pick overall. And the very first defensive player drafted this year out of Illinois, and Chandler never saw him. Nobody picked him up. Nobody laid a hand on him. Comes in from the top of your screen. It is amazing that Chris Chandler was even able to hold on to the ball. It's shots like that that it's quarterbacks' careers. When we talked about third down conversions. This is the most difficult challenge so far. Third and goal from the 12. And the delay to Harmon. A flag has been thrown. <laughs> Delay, offense. And Houston didn't penalty. get it off. Repeat third down. Houston has a, a terrific drive going here. They've had the ball, been able to control it for a, quite a while, which serves multiple purposes, one of which being so thin in the defensive line, it's allowing that defense to get a much needed rest. Ball at the 17 now. Third and goal. These are not enviable calls here. Ronnie Harmon is in there. Flank to the left side of Chandler. In motion comes Derek Russell. And to give to Harmon. Runs up the middle of the field. Finds room on the right side. And is dropped finally at about the 13-yard line. But here Harmon might be able to get loose. And a scuffle over there uh, close to the end zone. Chris Sanders involved there for Houston. But that'll bring up fourth down and uh, Al Del Greco to try to make it 34-20 in a 14-point lead. And you're right, Bart, this has been a long, long drive for Houston. Clock rolling at uh, 7.45 left in the ball game. And if they can tack this one on, three points, Jacksonville will have its work cut out. Although the Jaguars do have three timeouts left. This is a 30-yard attempt for Del Greco. And he puts it through. Del Greco with his second field goal of the game. And it gives Houston now a 14-point lead with 7.27 to go. What a scoring drive by the Houston Oilers. Al Del Greco's 29-yard field goal giving Houston a 34-20 lead. 10 minutes and 20 seconds they chewed up. So now Jacksonville down by 14, time of the essence. Randy Jordan from the three. Randy Jordan across the 30. Finally run out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 38-yard kickoff return by Jordan. Steve Jackson on the tackle for Houston. We'll be right back. Dan, uh, Dan, Randy Jordan was a little slow getting up, and here's the reason why. He gets collared and gets twisted coming out after that nice return. Steve Jackson uh, with the honors. Has a good game trying to get some positive yards. Looks almost like a face mask. He kind of twists his body. Looks like he's, his hip or his back is a little sore. Well, a good return by Jordan. It's up at the 42-yard line and with 7.16 left, trailing by 14. Jaguars go to work out of the shotgun. Houston in the nickel defense, expecting uh, a number of passes. This one complete to Pete Mitchell across the 45. Raphael Robinson, a part of that nickel package for Houston, makes the stop. Normally, Houston wants to play tight to the line, have eight guys, and here they, they've got guys standing 15 yards off the line of scrimmage. And another player down. Here's to be an oiler. And at 35, Joe Bowden, who was uh, shaken up earlier. This is Joe's first year as a starter for Houston. He takes over that linebacking spot vacated by Eddie Robinson, who, of course, plays now for Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. They're a little thin up, 
up in that area and flood the defensive line and the linebackers. Well, next Sunday, NBC Sports has more NFL action. As you see, Bowden bounce to his feet. Game one. Most of you will see another AFC Central showdown as these Oilers host Vinny Testaverde and the Baltimore Ravens. Others will see the Dolphins take on the Jets or the Chargers and the Packers. Then the second half of our doubleheader, most of you will see Troy Aikman of the Super Bowl champion Dallas Cowboys battle Jim Harbaugh and the Colts. Others will see the Raiders host this Jacksonville team. Check your local listings for the games in your area. NFL on NBC next Sunday starting at 12 noon Eastern time. Second down and five from the 47. And a quick give is to James Stewart, who's knocked by his own man, Darrell Lewis. Didn't stop, but uh, Stewart was knocked off course there just as he was turning the corner. Tony Baselli gave him a good shot, propel him forward for a few more yards. Picked up that first down. I, I don't know if James Stewart was ready for that shot. They're staying with the running game. Little pass. Baselli has a nice job and wants to get down the line into the defensive backfield to get another guy. Winds up hitting his own guy. Stewart has been the workhorse for Jacksonville. 17 rushes, 57 yards. Gets the first down. Brunel's pass complete. Pete Mitchell, another first down at the 36. And Bowden, who just went back into the game, makes the stop. It's getting to the point in the game now. They're down by 14 points. You've got under six minutes left. You're going to have to start speeding this up. Get good positive yards like that. That's fine. But you need to hurry your offense up because time is going to run out on you if you keep going down in a very methodical way. 537 and counting. And Brunel's got another man. Keenan McCardle loses his footing. He's close to the first down marker. Robinson and Robertson combined to make the snap on McCardle. It'll be a matter of where they spot this one. They need to get to the 26. That left-handed number eight out there is looking a lot like another very good quarterback in the NFL, Steve Young. A lot of people compare him to Steve Young, particularly with his ability to run when there's nothing there or uh, to, to make things happen impromptu. But as they come out to measure for the first down, uh, you played with Steve Young, and, and uh, I guess the one thing that Brunel has left as they get the first down, one thing he has left to improve on is the instant reads that Kevin Gilbride was telling us about. He's, he's moved himself up into another notch in the quarterback elite, but still Steve Young just has that instant recognition of where he's going, just at the precise time. He said he wanted to increase that uh, percentage completion, and today, 22 out of 30 is, is a very, very respectable job. Jaguars on the move. 5.07 left. Stewart drops the football. Appeared to get it back. And he did recover, so Jacksonville keeps possession, but they'll lose some yardage on that play. Never quite got the handoff. Lucky that he fell on it. We're talking about Brunel. I mean, we asked him why he had number eight. He says, is that because uh, Steve Young being a lefty was your uh, idol? He says, well, no, it's because when I went to Green Bay, I wanted to get number seven, but Ty Dittmer had it, and he wanted me to pay him for it. I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> well, here comes the blitz by Houston, and uh, Brunel did a good job of getting rid of it. That was Blaine Bishop coming in from his strong safety position, which, I don't know, he really isn't a strong safety. How many positions has he played today? Four or five? He plays wherever he wants to play, looks like. Fisher told us that he, um, on first down, he plays a linebacker spot. They have four linebackers with Bishop being one of them. And uh, at times they will bring him, and here they, they brought him on that play. He also told us that uh, Blaine Bishop has one of the best work ethics he's ever seen. He's in at 7 a.m., he's out at 7 p.m., works very hard, and he's earned Pro Bowl status because of it. Jacksonville's one of five on their third down conversions today. It appears they picked that one up. Andre Risen, although his momentum took him back inside the sticks, they will probably mark this where he caught the ball, and that should be good enough for the first down. Maybe not. Looks like they might be a little bit short fourth down, but you're in a situation where you've got to go for it. You're down by two touchdowns. Yep. 
Their goal isn't going to help you out too much when you're under four minutes to go. Yeah, they marked it uh, well back, so a little over a yard to go for the first down on fourth down. And Lachey Maston picked it up. Wayne Bishop made the stop, but that keeps the drive going with 3.40 left. Jacksonville has all three of its timeouts left. A good job by Jacksonville there with their decisiveness in, making, in deciding they were going to go for it on fourth down. Most teams will hesitate and try to make a decision and give the defense time to make some defensive adjustment. And here they had to stay in their nickel package and they picked up the first down on the run. At the 15. Brunel hangs in the pocket. Scott his man. Pete Mitchell fumbles the ball at the three. And Houston recovered it. Raphael Robinson recovered it. And Blaine Bishop made the pop on Mitchell. That would have been first and goal. We talked to him time and time again. They talked about Blaine Bishop and what a hitter he is. A big play guy. And that's what it a good playoff caliber team will do. They'll make the big plays when they have to. Jacksonville driving. Had an apparent first and goal, but Pete Mitchell popped by Blaine Bishop, and the Oilers recover, leading by 14 with 3.08 remaining. Five-yard line. And that would have made a game out of it, Bart. But uh, now Houston taking over at the seven-yard line, first and ten, with 3.08 remaining. As Eddie George gets the carry, it appeared that it was Blaine Bishop uh, who made the uh, hit on Mitchell, but also back there was uh, Marcus Robertson. Let's take another look. Marcus Robertson comes in there. He sees it. Looks like Blaine's trying to strip it. Looks like Marcus puts puts his helmet right on the ball. Either way, it's a big play. And Tom Coughlin down 14. The fans filing out as Houston's victory seems to be in hand up by 14 with three minutes left, but uh, Jacksonville still has a couple of timeouts left. who has really run wild in the second half. In fact, if you take a look at the running back comparison in the second half, it is really staggering in favor of the Oilers. In fact, I have a feeling we're going to take a look at that graphic when we come back. As promised, Eddie uh, George and James Stewart, the respective uh, featured backs for both teams, Eddie George, nearly uh, 100 yards just in the second half alone while James Stewart He's only mustered seven. He had a good first half going, and they have done a good job of containing him this second half. Third down and ten. Ball at their own seven. Houston just trying to take off more clock. Eddie George gets the call again. And the clock stopped at 2.50 to go. So uh, I think you've been impressed by what you've seen of Eddie George today, huh? I've been impressed by Eddie George. Been impressed by that Oilers offense as well. 140 yards for Eddie George. The big chunk, 76 yards in the third quarter. Reminder tonight on Dateline, what really happened in the O.J. Simpson case? Well, an inside expert reveals some startling secrets. That's Dateline Sunday tonight at 7.30, only on NBC. Reggie Roby will come in to punt it away for Houston on fourth down and five. Jacksonville uh, is able to get a pretty good return. Chris Hudson standing back at his own 45. If they can get a good return here, punch the ball in the end zone, then they do the onside thing, and who knows, but that's the kind of sequence of events they need. Would have, could have, should have. Reggie Roby back there to punt a very unique style of punting. His uh, foot never leaves the ground. Most punters have that little hop. Quick two-step punter. And a left foot planted. Chris Hudson comes up at midfield. Cuts it upfield. Drag down inside the five. Outstanding. John Henry Mills prevented the touchdown. Hudson, a third-round pick out of Colorado. He was a fourth award winner in 94, his last year with the Buffaloes. 
Takes a punt with a little hang time from Reggie Roby. And they will take it right up the field. Some terrific downfield blocking. Give Chris Hudson the opportunity. Punt is short. It's not up in the air long. And Chris Hudson just takes it straight up the field. John Henry Mills there preventing the touchdown, but Jacksonville got what they needed. As people start coming back into the stadium now. They are. I can't see them, but they should come back. First and goal at the three-yard line. Remember, Jacksonville trailing by 14. Lachey Maston, the lone setback for Jacksonville. Brunel locking it up. Juggling it by Keenan McCardle for the touchdown. Wow. They like this guy. They think he has great potential. He came in last year in Cleveland, did a terrific job. They signed him as an unrestricted free agent during the offseason, saying that he had big play potential. Good concentration. Brunel says, here it is. Someone get it. It's thrown a little behind him. Darrell Lewis plays the ball well. He's in good position anyway. Terrific concentration by Keenan McCardle. Catch of the game. He's got an even 100 yards in receiving. More importantly, Jacksonville is right back in it, trailing by seven. 2.33 left. But they have none of their timeouts left. But we'll see an onside kick, you can bet, from Mike Hollis. You have to see an onside kick. If you don't get an onside kick, you're not going to get the ball until it's well under a minute left in the game. Mike Hollis had as many successful onside kicks last year. They totaled four as the entire rest of the NFL. So here's a guy that is pretty skilled at this. They practice it. We're watching, I was watching him in practice on Friday, and he was practicing his onside kicks with the kickoff coverage team to time it up because they start running before he actually moves towards the ball. He moves at the right, at the appropriate time according to where his coverage team is. Well, the fans that have stayed are on their feet. So we'll see if this practice on Friday pays off for them. We can, we'll see if he's able to continue that streak of successful onside kicks. 34-27 Houston. 2.33 left. Hollis getting ready for an onside attempt. Again, no timeouts left for the Jaguars. This is crucial. doesn't he? That ball was perfect for Thomas to grab out of midair. Nobody had a chance at it. The Oilers were waiting for the ball to come. Thomas does a great job of kicking the ball into the ground and causing it. Look at look, this. Look at the ball go up in the air. Thomas takes it. And Tom Coughlin, who was upset with the special teams coming into this game, that was one heck of a special teams execution there. So now Jeff Fisher and the Oilers concerned on the sideline as uh, Jacksonville takes over from the 49-yard line. Again, they have no timeouts left, trailing by seven. Back-to-back -back special teams plays allows them the opportunity to get right back in this game. Brunel will work out of the shotgun. Dime package for Houston. <laughs> Brunel hangs in there. This one he'll throw away. Good smart decision by Brunel that takes a shot from Gary Walker. Stops the clock with 2.21 to go. 
Brunel's back in the shotgun. He gets his protection. Does a smart thing. When he feels the pressure, knows he's going to get hit, he throws it away to prevent the sack and, and more importantly, to prevent the clock from keep running. Three wide outs for Jacksonville. Ryzen, McCardle, and Smith. And Brunel's pass complete. Close to a first down. Darrell Lewis on the coverage. Pete Mitchell hauled it in. Very close to the first down. Clock stops at 2.16 to go. There's plenty of time left. Got 41 yards to go. First down. <laughs> Mitchell got it. And Brunel is playing a very, very good game. He's playing well within himself. Remember, it was Pete Mitchell who fumbled inside the five-yard line. Comes Pete? up with a big play there. He would love to make amends. And Brunel complete. Andre Risen trying to make something after the catch, but instead he'll be dropped at the 38-yard line by Darrell Lewis. Clock rolling to the two-minute warning. They're not going to get another snap off. But Jacksonville, down 34-20, has suddenly made a game of it with a successful onside kick. You're watching the NFL on NBC. Well, even though Jacksonville went 4-12 and last year, Mark Brunel certainly proved he was efficient in the fourth quarter, Bart. Nine touchdown passes, nine of his 15 last year coming in the last quarter. But he's out of timeout, second down and six here. Jaguars trail by seven. Pete Mitchell, can he hang on or is it intercepted? Marcus Robertson took the deflection and Houston sets up at the 23. Wow, wow. Marcus Robertson there to make another big play. They sit. Everyone was telling us that Marcus is the guy that's back there. He's quarterbacking that defensive backfield, putting them in the right position. Brunel trying to go to Pete Mitchell. That's a heck of an interception by Robertson. Wow. They made a heck of a run. Now the Oilers can just sit on it and run the clock out. Pete Mitchell involved in a couple of crucial plays. Remember the series before, fumbling inside the five. That one just off his outstretched hands. That was a little high thrown by Brunel in defense, certainly, of Mitchell, but uh, good pick by Robertson. He was there, read it well, broke at the ball, was in spot to make the catch and made it. The trademark of this Houston team today is when they've had to make the plays, they've made them. And that's a sign of a, of a good team. I think they learned some from last week that they were there in the game against Kansas City, but they didn't make the plays when they needed to. Late in the game, they made a few crucial mistakes. Today, they've made the plays. They've been the aggressive team, and they've made the plays. This is a pretty good team, this Houston Order team. And uh, Houston certainly has been on the short end of some uh, games, especially in Jeff Fisher's uh, early tenure in Houston, where they've been victimized by mistakes. Uh, they've lost a lot of close games. Jeff Fisher won five of nine to close out 95 in his, now in his second full season. They had the disappointing 20 to 19 loss to Kansas City last week, but uh, he has lost some close games, and so Houston will be celebrating all the way back. To Tom Houston Co and Tom Coughlin's uh, team will fall to one and one. Tom, Tom is a very consistent guy. He doesn't get too excited when they win or too depressed when they lose. As he told us, told us, we preach the process, not the result. So I think this team will rebound from, from this. They, they know they can play with the, the better teams in the NFL, and they know that they can be a successful team. Mark Brunell, I think, is coming into his own. Houston goes to one and one. They're home next week. We'll be there, Bart, for the Baltimore Ravens, who come into Houston. Baltimore beaten uh, pretty soundly by Pittsburgh today. And then it's uh, Jacksonville on the road. They have two games on the road. They'll be at Oakland, and then they'll take on New England on the road as well. Well, it's still early in the season. You've got... Uh, you got two teams 
that are much improved over the 95 squads. The Schuster team has filled in a lot of the holes that they had from last year. Got a quarterback that's playing with a lot more confidence, doing a lot more things. They've got a good, solid offensive line. They've got what's considered as one of the best defensive backfields. And they're making the big plays when they need to make them. You've got to be impressed with this Oiler team. Good day for uh, Chris Chandler, 14 of 22 for 226 yards. And no mistakes. And a good day for Eddie George. 17 carries, 140 yards, and a touchdown. So Chandler and George, the big players on offense for Houston. What's impressive with that George st statistic, about 17 carries for 140 yards, is that so many of them came after he broke a tackle. Very impressive. Houston wins it by a final score of 34-27. For Bardos, I'm Dan Hicks. Stay tuned as we go back to 